So here with us now to hopefully provide a little bit more reliability and a look at what we can expect this November is Stony Brook University professor Helmut Norpop. So Helmut, I'm really glad to have you on the program tonight. I always liked looking at your model because it's historically accurate. I mean, and to be clear, it's different than polling. It's a model. And I want to have you explain that a little bit for our viewers and exactly what your model is saying for this election season. Well, glad to be back with you. Thank you very much. My bottle uh, predicts, uh, gives Donald Trump a 91% chance of winning re-election. Uh, I've not changed that. There's no way I can change that. It's based on uh, the evidence from primaries. The early primaries that uh, took place a while ago, people have sort of forgotten about it, but uh, Donald Trump did very well, even for a sitting president. People often, often dismiss that and said, oh, okay, a sitting president doesn't have a hard time with that, but he actually had a contender. Uh, he did very well. Joe Biden did not. Joe Biden did terribly in New Hampshire. He did better in South Carolina. But the average of those two, which is what I have been looking uh, in 2016, before it was only New Hampshire, uh, puts him way behind uh, Donald Trump, who also has that advantage of being a first-term president, which I guess most of us know from our history, means that uh, most of these are getting reelected, and especially if they don't have a big challenge in the primaries. And we keep getting told, for example, that these are unprecedented times. In fact, if I hear the word one more time, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. But And it does make sense. I mean, for example, the coronavirus pandemic is a once-in-a-hundred-year type of event that did happen to take place during an election year. Uh, it seems that our society is in an ever-changing position right now. I don't know if it's a result of social media or perhaps uh, a little bit of our own echo chambers, if you will, when it comes to media consumption. But this year does seem different at all, uh, a little bit to me. Does that change your analysis at all? Or do you think that, I mean, historical data is historical data. And when we look at how incumbents do, I mean, that's hard to dispute. Well, I mean, it's hard to say that something like that would not play a role. But uh, I think most people who do this kind of forecasting would have a very difficult time of sort of uh, taking that into account because you don't have a, a thing like October surprise or, or natural disaster, et cetera, where you can just plug it in and see how it has worked in the past. We don't know. And I don't think it is very clear uh, from the very beginning how something like that should play out politically, because it's not a typical political issue how to handle something like uh, a virus outbreak. We're really in uncharted territory. So I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not too sure that we should pay all that much attention. And I think if you look at the polls, whatever you may think about the polls, they haven't really shown a great deal of shifting. Uh, when the virus outbreak took, took place. And in the polls, uh, Trump has been behind Biden all along, long before the, the uh, pandemic. And, uh, well, he might have gotten a little bit more behind, but it sort of goes back and forth. I don't really see that kind of a big, big shift. So I would be surprised if in the end, when everything is done and we look back, that we would find that the pandemic per se has made that much of a, a difference to the election. And even when we look at polls from 2016, I mean, I understand why people are unwilling to listen this time around. I mean, uh, I just saw the New York Times, for example, the needle uh, on this day in the past where it said Hillary Clinton had a 91 percent chance of winning the election. Uh, the, for example, the polling aggregates right now aren't that much different than we saw in 2016. Uh, Joe Biden is up slightly more than Hillary Clinton was in 2016, and his favorability is different. He's not nearly as disliked as Hillary Clinton. But do you fear that perhaps this time around the polling still hasn't necessarily gotten it right with a candidate like President Trump and many Republicans saying that there are these silent voters across the country. Do you believe all that? Well, well, I think you're right. I mean, I think the, the uh, uh, Trump gives pollsters a headache. Uh, they really haven't figured out how to sort of get a handle on him or get get a handle on his supporters, etc. Uh, whether they are silent voters, secret voters, etc., or people that, who, who, who don't show up somehow, uh, we really don't know for sure. I mean, I think there have been some, some speculation about that last time and some studies uh, not very, not very conclusive. I think one thing is sure, and I see it every day in my my home area. There is an incredible enthusiasm for Trump among voters that you don't see among Biden voters. I mean, you saw the protests, you saw the Black Lives Matter protests, etc. But that wasn't necessarily support for Biden. I mean, these are maybe anti-Trump uh, uh, sentiments that you saw there. But you don't see the kind of uh, uh, sort of mass numbers of people uh, showing support for Biden. Uh, compared to Trump. And I think there's something going on. And I, I know, I mean, rallies are not votes. People have said that. But uh, uh, I think the uh, the pollsters may be missing something just the way they did in uh, in 2016. And in the end, what, what is really important is the battleground states. And that's the big comparison. And I think 
in those, I think the the uh, the uh, gap is so similar uh, compared to what it was uh, four years ago. No, I think that's a very good point because it really doesn't matter how many millions more people in California, for example, are going to vote for Joe Biden over President Trump. It matters how many of the few undecided thousand voters in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, wherever it may be, they are the ones that necessarily matter. And it doesn't matter how much they drive up the national polls. It's those figures in those key swing states, as you point out. I think you're exactly right to say that. But Homer Norpoth, it's always a pleasure having you on this program, talking about your model and where we stand with the polls as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anytime. My pleasure.